magma then. And when this room, before this room was a room and it was just one big solid rock, we had a big crack going right up through the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And that magma from the Earth's mantle actually pushed itself all the way up through that crack, all the way to the surface on top of the mountain. So this is known as a plutonic intrusion because it intruded into the room. It's also known as a quartz diorite dike. Um, dike is what people call a dam sometimes and this effectively works as a dam for water because the uh, water flowing above us on the surface is coming down at an angle like this and when it hits this rock here the rock is impermeable to water, it won't let water pass through it, so the water has to drip down on the right side, which is why we mostly see only formation growing on the right side and not over in this area here. Another reason why this room is so large is because it used to contain pyrite, and uh, otherwise known as fool's gold. Pyrite contains sulfur, and if you mix water and sulfur together, you get a much, much stronger acid than the carbonic acid. Hi, buddy. Was that fun? Hi. Where's Elena? There she is. Making it warm. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Was that fun? That's a great question. Yeah. So I have to go have a five thousand pieces. I waited here. Okay. 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 Logged over. <laughs> here, wrap it here. Stand up. I'll wrap it around you. No, I don't want it. Well, I don't want to carry it. <laughs> My legs are tired. Next is that uh, we have to the cave and the connections that the cave has to the earth, as well as some of those connections that we have to each other. And on behalf of the National Park Service and myself and Oregon Caves National Monument, I just want to thank you guys for coming up here today. You are doing your part in helping to preserve these places, not only for ourselves, but for future generations. And uh, if it wasn't for people like you, these places probably wouldn't be here. So, <laughs> as you all know what's going on right now, we want to make sure that... Uh, yeah. That I still have a job and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you guys can still come and appreciate these places. So, anyway, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, thank you. If any of you need to uh, get back down to the visitor center very quickly, you can certainly follow the paved path down. It's about five, ten minute walk. If anybody wants to uh, enjoy one of our trails here, we have a cliff nature hike that goes all the way up to the top of the mountain and then goes back down to behind the visitor center. That might take you about half an hour or so, but it's really, it's really pretty. Did anybody have any other questions that I didn't answer or anything that uh, you would like to know more about? Other than the actual openings, are there any other clues on the exterior that there might be caves underneath the mound? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, there, are there are other openings on top of this mountain that uh, bats would use to get into the cave and actually throughout the National Forest land around here, there are many other cave systems. Whether they've been exposed or not, they're there um, because there's so much marble in, in uh, the general area here. Now, 
some of them have been exposed and some of them have been sealed up and some of them have been kept secret. Uh, mostly because we want to preserve them in a pristine state sure. and also because of the liability of people going in and you know, exploring on their own. But that's the Forest Service, not the Park Service. Yeah. <laughs>